This is India. A country that is just as often loud, raucous, and wonderfully unpredictable as it is sublime. Home to 5 million street food carts, 10 million more chai stands, and 200 million horns. This is Marijuana Ronnie, former car salesman turned James Beard nominated chef and restaurateur. This year he decided it was time to bring his Carolina boys to India. James Grogan, chef at Chaipani Asheville in the Indian neophyte. Daniel Peach, chef of Chaipani Decatur and the Hindi speaking veteran. And yours truly, Michael Files, tasked with filming these madmen as they hit 10 cities in 11 days by planes, trains and cycle rickshaws, eating everything in sight along the way. So sit back and enjoy the ride. This is Chaipani's Cutting Chai. With more than 20 million people calling it home, Mumbai is massive. But while we were there, we were actually interested in one of the smallest subcultures of India, a group of people with an outsized influence for their dwindling numbers, the Parsis. So I'm a bit of a mutt. My dad is Parsi. My mom's Hindu, Hindu Brahmin. So Parsis are Iranians, basically, but back in the day it was called Persia. And they left Iran because as Zoroastrianism shrank, they were less and less tolerant of the Zoroastrian religion. So they finally made it to India. What they brought with them, though, was this really unique culture. They brought this Persian cooking, this amazing food from Iran, and incorporated that with what they found in India creating its own unique brand of food called Parsi cuisine, which is famous all over India. And we knew exactly where to find it, Kalaba, the original stomping grounds of Parsis in Old Bombay, and when I lived in the city, one of my favorite neighborhoods, teeming with old world charm and beautifully crumbling architecture. In particular, we had our sights set on dining at one of the last of the ancient Irani cafes, the famous and indomitable Cafe Britannia. <laughs> Are my people. There's not very many of them. They're wonderful people. So we get to Britannia Cafe, and it's everything you ever want an Irani cafe to be. Dirty, dark furniture, dimly lit, with hand-painted signs everywhere. Don't argue with management. The food smells amazing. Before we even get a chance to look at our menus, up pops the venerable Bowman Kohenor, 90-year-old proprietor of Cafe Britannia. He came in and it was a master class in upselling. First he tells us how stunningly handsome we all are <laughs> and how fortunate any women in our lives would be to know us. Right off the bat, this guy's greasing us. We had just come from a huge lunch and he somehow convinces us to order a four course meal. You must try the sully chicken. Even the queen herself loves the sully chicken. Then, you know, and then he upsells us for the Bombay duck. Parsis love this dish. They slit it open, they stuff a little masala inside, and then they batter it and sort of pan fry it. And then the, the meat is just like incredibly flaky. And you can see how fine the bones are. It's almost like hair. Bombay duck is not, in fact, duck. Turned out to be quite delicious. I thought it was an eel. Turns out to be lizard fish. That's a thing. I don't even want to think of the water chicken. <laughs> where, where, where it comes from. Where it comes from. But my God, is it delicious. Oh, my God. This is the famous dish. The famous? The berry biryani. Yeah. The famous yeah. berry biryani, which uses these little, I guess they're little red currants that he imported from Iran. So, of course, at this point, like, the food's already up to here. Mm. And we're just like... <laughs> even <laughs> forgot country. <laughs> forgot of her country. So we get ready to dig in, and then Bowman shows up again. He kept popping up with the jack-in-the-box. Yeah. yeah. And he comes over with all these papers. The first one is like, letter from the queen. From the queen! Yeah. There was one from George Bush, yeah. from Cheney's <laughs> office. At one point he pulled out a big sticker of like, the queen. The cool thing about Bowman was that I really kind of connected with the guy. I mean, he reminded me of so many of the characters in my family. So my grandfather, Sarosh, was basically another Bowman-style, larger-than-life character. Sarosh was uh, in the town of Emmenegger, which is where I ended up growing up. And uh, he was sort of the big wig in town. So I mean, Sarosh owned the trust office compound. He owned Sarosh Talkies. He owned the gas station called Sarosh Motors. Uh, and he owned this canteen called Sarosh Canteen. So we headed east to Emmenegger, which is five and a half hours away from Bombay. 
and I took the boys to check out the old place. This is Serge Canteen. At the time, this is the only place where if you're Western, you can get something. So there'd be little patio tables out there. Little the Ridge, they all managed to be there. And Lime Ricky, the cherry pot and Lime Ricky? Yep, originated here. Came from here. And then after this guy bought it, I turned it into porn, a triple X rated theater. So the whole thing was seedy and just kind of fell out of business. This is where I used to hang out and drink Golden Eagles and Kingfishers back in the day. And order Lime Ricky's. would be like, Go the Ridge, egg Lime Ricky, please! It used to be like a food wonderland to me. What I mean, kind of food did they have? A little, like, uh, Irani cafe snacks. So they had like little. Pastry stuck with meat inside, a little flaky filo dough meat, like samosas almost. Cheese toast, chili cheese toast, chicken pakoras, the pizza, which was basically bread with tomato ketchup and cheese yeah. that they made them. You know, pizza. I mean, Chai Pani can really trace its origins all the way back to Suresh Canteen. So we serve on the menu, we have Parsi chicken burgers, which is basically a Parsi kebab. We have Parsi chicken curry, which is one of the most popular dishes at Chai Pani, and it really pays homage to the origins of Parsis in India because it uses that Persian spices, but also brings coconut milk into it, which is alien to Persians. So in Ahmednagar, there was an ashram, the Meher Baba ashram, that my family has always been a part of. And Westerners would come there on pilgrimage, and in the evenings, they would all hang out at Sarosh Canteen. So being a kid, I was of course fascinated with wanting to hang out with these Americans and wanted to be like them. Well, you know, the funny thing about Sarosh Canteen is that it was one of my first memories of India because I first went to India when I was seven years old. My parents were one of the crazy- Crazy, long-haired hippies up. that went to Jamal right. And, <laughs> and that's, they, yeah. And well, brought, that's basically how we kind of got to know each other. It was yeah, because of your yeah. parents showing up in India. Exactly. And I distinctly remember the first time I went to Sarosh Canteen, I loved it. I love Sarosh Canteen. I remember eating a sandwich and this goat comes up and eats my brother's sandwich off his plate. And to <laughs> me, me it was out. like the coolest thing that had happened in my life up to that point. I was like, this is awesome. Sarosh Canteen was kind of like my mini Irani cafe away from Kalaba, but in Emmanuel, you wouldn't have to go too deep into my psyche to see the influence that Sarosh Canteen has had in Chaipani. And going back to Nugger with the boys really brought that home.